about to get going on Space Marine Captain with that master crafted heavy bolt rifle. That is a mouthful. So we have our captain here. We've already got him primed, assembled, broken down into base components. Helmet, make it easier to paint all those little areas around the head without the collar getting in the way. The body, which this guy has a really bad gap on his uh, shoulder, so make sure you uh, do a prime and then a sand and uh, get that smoothed out um, if you're assembling this model. I don't know why they put a, a seam there. That's nope. Um, and then his backpack. Again, make it easier to paint his cloak without the backpack in the way. And then we've modeled him up a little base here, doing the, the lava theme. Got some, uh, what are these things called? Saffrons? She chevron? They're not chevrons, uh, but they're little... Um, Crafting things that you can get at Michael's to do bubbles for lava and that. And they come in a bunch of different sizes to get a big bag of it. Now, I've already added some paint to my airbrush and forgot about it. So, it's sitting in there. So, we're going to hope that this, uh, once I add the thinner, it actually works. It looks like we're spraying. So, we're starting off with the extra dark green from Vallejo model color. And we're just going to base coat the armor in that. So... Just taking your airbrush, getting a nice solid coat of that dark green. And then we're going to come back and punch the shadows when we're done with this airbrush coat. Always remember to take your time, go slow. You're already saving time by using the airbrush. No reason to sit here and annihilate it by pulling your trigger all the way back. Let it build up on its own. And don't worry about getting paint on other areas. You can paint over it and the airbrush puts it on thin. So we're going to take, after we get our airbrush coat on, the uh, Dragon Hoof Nightshade and Nun Oil. Add those to our Turbo Dork Dry Palette. Once you've got those added, we're going to take a little bit of our Nun Oil and some of our Dragon Hoof. We're going to mix a wash here we can mix washes and you can tell this this stuff is pretty hydrophobic so the, uh, the liquid likes to clump up here I'm gonna dab a little bit off the brush you can go heavy with this um, I like to go heavy with washes and sort of scoot them around the model but this is our shadow area for all of those little nooks and crannies and lines and things that bips and bobs for space marines so take any of the the lines that you see and even if we might paint over them later go ahead and hit them now because you might not and if you're taking the time to think about it you've already wasted the amount of time that it might have took to just hit it with a wash anyway and move on so all our shadows we're going to do that to the head and the body as well just using the backpack as an example. And I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole process, but just getting those shadows in, and we'll show you what they look like when they're dry. All right, we're back. We got our wash on, and it is dry. Get it in the light here for you, so you can see that uh, nice deep blue-black shadow that we got. A little bit glossy in some places, but that's going to get matted out as we work and over time. Some of these areas are still wet back in here. Seen a little bit of shine. And then on the helmet here down in those eye sockets, you can really see how we accentuated that shadow. Now to get started on your green, we're going to add to our palette these three colors. So we're going from our dark to a sick green midtone to a necrotic green highlight. Um, so let's go ahead and get those added here. All right, we're ready to start painting now. So we got our dark green with our sick green. We're going to add a little bit of our sick green here. Punch it up. We're going to paint this knee pad. And we're going to accentuate the shape of it. This is a fairly quick or try to be fairly quick layering process. So slower than traditionally. Just taking an airbrush and doing the scheme, but thinking more about placement of color and not just using the airbrush to get a uh, base color down for armor. I'm 
All right, as that dries, we're gonna add a little bit more sit green. Part of the layering process. So I like to drag my colors out and then I can create other pools later and sort of see what my previous color was. And you can see the separation of color as it's going on. We're doing a semi-luminous armor. Got a little bit of a punch to it. Pulling my edges as I get these first layers in. Making sure I'm getting good coverage. The greens coat pretty well, so that, that makes them a little bit more fun to paint because they, they go on quick. Quick is satisfying, especially when you're getting results you're happy with. And a little booboo there painting on the camera. I kind of slipped over into my shadow, so I'll just have to add that back to the point where we're going almost... We're pretty much pure sick green. So base color, wash, and layered up to highlight. Feather in a little bit for a blend. Don't have to be too blendy. Still see some layers here and there, and that is fun. All right, and then we go sit green, pure. Let's see. I'm just gonna test it. Could do one layer here, just for blending sake. The edge highlights. We're going to tie those together. And we'll pull an edge down here for a little bounce light. Bring it up. All right, now we can start adding our necrotic green. Yep, necrotic green, one of the P3 paints. Necrotic green coats way better than the scorpion green, and it seems like it separates less. So, longer shelf life. If you're like me and you put a color down for a year, it's important to have a long shelf life. But there are some colors that just get more use than others. Feathering it out a little bit. Just layering it up. So two layers for your highlight, about three for your base to mid-tone. And they'll go progressively quicker because the highlight is a much smaller area. And then pure green here up at the top. Pure necrotic green. And of course following our edge. It's like a little bit of an edge and then like a divot that kind of pops out. bulb of highlight and then just a little bit down here on our bounce edge and there we go we got our knee pad in so we're gonna go and paint all of the armor in this method um, and then I will get back to you 
maybe today. All right, time for non-metallic gold. Took me an entire extra day to finish up the green armor. I hit kind of a brain fog. I don't know, that happens to all of us, and we should just accept it when it happens, but it's really hard when it's work, and it's creative work. So all these little brown areas I'm showing you are the base color for our non-metallic gold. And I'm going to work up the, the shoulder pad just as a simple demonstration. The three colors we're using, mahogany brown, sculpher's brown, and white. Sculpher's brown is very heavy yellow, yellowy brown. Um, it's not quite like an RGB yellow. It's more like a sand or infection. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just it's it's got a little bit of brown in it to to pull it down. And the trick for me for non-metallics is doing your layers in a, in a mapped out fashion just like how I do this armor here. It's just the armor doesn't go all the way to white so it doesn't look as shiny. Gold's gonna go all the way to white. Um, we have an almost black base for this so there is a shiny element to it, right? It is armor. Uh, they do polish it. The servitors need something to do when they're traveling through hyperspace. Alright, taking it, mixing up a little bit of that Sculpherous Brown, and then I'm going to map out my highlights on here. I know I want a strong highlight forward, because that's kind of the view space, and then definitely I'm going to leave dark on the top. So when you're thinking about highlighting for non-metallics, really need to concentrate kind of on your shapes. So, flats, cylinders, um, spheres. They all highlight differently. Cylinders are in a straight line down the path of the cylinder. Spheres, a uh, circle at the high point. And they all have different bounce lights. Flats are kind of along the flat. You can see here, as I'm tilting this sword, like even just the shininess of this, there's a point where the highlight's a little bit brighter on the flat than it is um, up at like the top of this area. But as I rotate it, it changes, right? Just as any object would. So it's forcing those flats to have gradients along that flat. And that's a very overly simplistic uh, description of just methodology behind doing non-metallic metals. It takes a little bit of time, but when it clicks, it clicks. So all I can encourage people to do is to keep painting. So you see here on the shoulder pad, there are distinct areas where the base coat has been painted over, and we have our uh, Sculpher's Brown mix. So from here, all I do Layer it up. We'll stop about there. And we'll pull edge highlights on this next mix. So base coat, one mix, two mix, three mix. Then we're going to go to pure. We're going to hit the cord so that you guys can live in an earthquake. I hate it when I get brain fog. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes. It's just the holidays. This is my, uh, I don't know how many people watch these videos all the way through. If you do, just, you know, leave me a comment. Say, oh yeah, I'll watch them. talking into the uh, internet void here. <laughs> Alright, going up to our pure yellow.
everybody having a grand old time tonight at Low Mill. I'll turn this way so I have better access to the edge over here. Pull it down. And up through the shoulder pad. Making sure I'm getting a solid coat. And now we don't mix white into this pool. We start another pool for white. The reason being is this will desaturate our white. These two, this is our saturation color. So this is getting saturated by our yellow, and then the white is getting saturated by our yellow. If we add either of these to the same color, we get too desaturated. I like really intense colors, so. And if you're watching my videos, you probably like my style of saturated video or color but if you want to try more desaturated non-metallics just take this yellow and dumb it down get a more desaturated yellow one more layer of white kind of cutting through the middle and you can see how the layers are sort of building up and then just pure white you get really quick toward the end there because they're really small and you don't even have to go through the whole object you can just add like a little bit of an edge highlight you know, hit your corners kind of go through and there we go when you look at him forward here you get that nice little metallic shine now do have to address like going on the inside and the underside of these. The underside is going to be a little bit darker, but that's it. Same process, like same color. I know there may be choices along the line. You'd be like, well, where, where do I put what? Like, just follow kind of what you're doing. I like to stagger non-metallics when I'm doing a no-brainer non-metallic. So if I have a really strong light here, I'll keep my uh, I'll offset the highlight to the edge here and pull the highlight down so that there's something else interesting on the inside instead of like putting all my gold right into the corner. All right, we got our gold finished up on this guy and I have done my sanity blocking in of the black areas that we need to like on the gun, the cloak. The inside of the cloak actually has a little bit of khaki or is it the, no, it's the earth brown mixed into it. We're gonna, gonna go for that lizard cloak sort of inside feel um, like we did on one of the other salamanders for this same person um, and I've got the little gold skull on his head and the uh, reliquary on his backpack now we're going to work on the edge highlighting for our objects which means we need a little bit of blue so for that we're taking our Prussian blue mixing it with a black and then adding white to it All right, got my blue added to my palette. Take some of this black over here. Mix in a healthy amount of blue. And then add some white for our first layer of blue-gray. Um, so anywhere you have hard edges on this guy. So this gun, chock full of them. You can go a little wider with these highlights if you want because we're going to build them up toward the edges. I'm just hitting everything that's vertical right now, so I don't have to readjust the model. You can see that little bit of highlight on that first layer. I will build up an area for you guys. Split the difference of that. Go back, push some edges. Alright, once you get your second layer highlights on, add just a little bit more white for a third step. And these are just kind of the corners and the very, very, very bright edges. 
Uh-huh. Hit those little bolts. Make all those little details pop out. These corners here. Somebody found some bubble wrap down the hallway. Yeah. And just start picking out all these little areas. Give you that nice GW uh, black edge lit look. The things to keep in mind when you're doing your edge highlights, your progressive edge highlights, is that our non-metallic metal follows this color path. So the base coat for our steel is going to be the center blue, and then when we step it up, you can go ahead and start doing your highlights for your non-metallic as well. Again, always fighting light. So if I want to come in here, and I'm going to be pretty rough and sketchy with this n and M. We're not going for smooth, we're going for like a battle-worn look. And the, the sketchy progression is better for that. So just adding those secondary highlights. And then I have some metal up here where I'll just do some, some layering followed by a little bit of uh, quick edges. So again, this is our final highlight for our edges, but also our in and m in and in and in and in um, I'm going to go in here and try to hit these. Let me see, I've got one right there. Just doing like little, little, little bitty lead ins so that you get that kind of like lead in, lead out with your um, edges. So I go ahead and progress on that step. And then I've got here, you can see the basis for the gun. A little skull here, a little skull there. Um, went ahead and did these in the kind of edge highlight, but did like a fatter edge highlight for the cabling. And you see it's, it's back there as well. Um, and then the bottom of the shoe, so he's got his little black trim. We're going to have uh, an M on the earpieces, these little studs. The hoses are just the edge highlight, and then he's got a little metal tab here as well. All right, after we get those edge highlights done and our highlights sketched in for our non-metallic metal, we're going to shift over to a yellow for our non-metallic. So I want to desaturate this a little bit. I'm using this pale yellow from Game Color. And I'm going to add some white to it. I don't want it to be super strong, more like an ice yellow. And this will be our highlight right before the white on all of our metal bits. So to demonstrate on the same area, get some of that on there. Again, sketchy's fine. It just makes the metal look more worn. The important part is you get some broad highlights in there and hit your edges. Putting some streaks, little glints and scratches and stuff. Stutter step in the brush where need be. Where that middle look? And that's it. We're not putting this on any of the edge highlights for the black. This is just for the, the steel. You can already see like a little bit of that illusion starting with it. And so every one of these little blue objects and the ring around this green. And then inside the vents, don't forget that to do a little highlight in there just to give it that metallic look. Alright, once we get that light yellow in, it's time for the pure white. These are the point highlights and edges for the most part. So on the skull here, just hitting the high points real quick, giving that pure, pure light desaturation. Just 
is always layer based, so going in and hitting previous layer and then just reinforcing that a little bit. You can see the, the value shift from here to here as well as the kind of tone shift to a pure desaturation. And again, you can be kind of rough and sketchy with it, just giving it that metal look. After your whites are laid in for your steel, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the cloak. Now previously we had taken black and earth for our base coat. Now all we're going to do is add white to this to layer up our color. So here you can see that's about where we need to be as far as our mixture. And now I'm just going to take some white, desaturate a little bit, to get our next layer. So you got kind of a brown gray that you're going to be working with. And just accentuating the shapes here. This is the easy part to get to. We're also going to do the inside of the cloak, but not as high, right? Not as not as high in value. Because this is catching more light on the outside here. readjusting to hit this shape. I'll just go through the whole process real quick on here. Soften out some of these transitions just with shape. There. Bring it up again. feathering out the bottom a, a bit and if you're ever concerned about the transition so if we have a pretty strong transition there you can just come in take your uh, previous color mix it up it'll go on a little lighter and then when it dries this will feather out You see how it's drying and starting to get darker right there. It goes online. That's the same color on my brush, so it just let it dry before you go back and over adjust one way or the other. catching that highlight a little bit. I got a little shape here that's like doesn't necessarily make sense but it does for plastic structure. So I'll go ahead and kind of highlight that up like the cloak's getting tangled up in his armor a little bit. That's about as high as dude. Just do two layers for that. You know, it's good. It's got a little bit of a natural tone to it. And I'm still thinking about what to do to the back of the cloak, whether or not we're going to do fire. Now we're going to do fire on the front here. Yeah. I'm going to finish up the inside of the cloak and then get back to you. All right, let's go ahead and get some base coats on our leathers. So ends here on this strap. And then we're using the, uh, the Tierra Earth. Terra Earth. Tiara Earth. No, same color that we mix with the black for the inside of the cloak. These are just base coats. After you're done with those base coats, we're going to take some of Gilliman Flesh Contrast here. 
and just do a quick overcoat. I've already hit these objects down here, giving us that nice skin, leather is skin, leather look. Gives it that red, it kind of goes in there, gets us some shadows too. Or once it's on there, just let it stick and then let it dry. And go fairly heavy. I don't think the last guy had leather on him. This is the second salamander. Well, not the second. Second one we've painted in this tutorial series. Maybe it's not a series. I don't know. I'm just using big words. All right, so just those leather bits, real quick. Uh, we'll let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna get out the airbrush and lay a quick fade on the cloak here. All right, I've got engine gray in my airbrush. This is just a pre-made dark blue gray. And in that same vein we've been working with. Um, and I've actually thinned it down even more. It is already a fairly thin color. And I just want that extra control when I'm doing work over something I've already done. So just using the contours of the cape that already exists. To lay in this quick fade and then we'll go punch some edges here in a second. I just wanted a softer start on the outside of the cape. And it's really subtle so it's not going to change our look too much. So. You can see here we got that nice soft kind of blue-gray beginning, knocking out things quick. I'm going to take some khaki now, now that our wash is dry. Add that to my palette. I'm going to mix this with my earth here. That's right, it's my earth. Just a tiny step up. And then we can start developing our our highlights on our bags and stuff. It's going for kind of a thick edge. Reinforce where the boundaries of the uh, package are. And you can do some a uh, little bit of weathering on these if you want to do some prelude, do like kind of some scratches. Get them knocked in just a little bit so you can you can see there where they're still a little bit wet be your guideline going up it's very subtle highlight so a lot of room for error or creativeness and then progression wise we'll just keep adding khaki Move it up a little bit more aggressively this time. If you want it to be more blended, be less aggressive. You can thin out those uh, scratches a little bit. Make them a little more fine lined as we work our way up. And then going straight to pure. I 
and that'll be the the track to highlight up all of our leather bits now we switched over to our Vallejo khaki to do the base coat for our purity seal so we have one here on his gun and one hiding over here on his butt um, so we're gonna take not the Reichland flesh shade but the seraphim sepia seraphim sepia had to find it get out our liner and just give our purity seals a quick shade I guess I shouldn't say quick shade because it's a GW product it's not a shade it's a wash or what it is a shade just doesn't say quick shade on it but it's a wash we're just going to hit all our purity seals with that. Alright, well that sepia is drying. Let's take some of our Reaper Mahogany. Same base for our gold. And I'm taking uh, cinnamon red. So like not an RGB red. Mixing it down, making a base coat for all the red bits. So we're going to go in here and get the lenses. And then we got the handle to his sword and the sheath to his sword. Might need two coats of this color just for coverage purposes. So this area down in here, we'll get a base coat. And then our purity seals as well. So I'll be working on this and then when, once your sepia is dry, I can see mine's still a little bit wet, a little bit shiny in there. We can paint the purity seals with this base color. And then the handle to the sword. I don't think there's anything else red. After, oh, yep, there is. There's the uh, this purity seal back here. And then these buttons on his arm. Alright, after you get your red in place, you can go back to the purity seals themselves. Get that Vallejo khaki. And just start highlighting up. Getting the edges and getting the high points, leaving that shadow in there. And then here's a spot that I've already highlighted. We'll take some white and do about a 50 50 mix and just take it up one more step before we stop. Just to accentuate those shapes a little bit. All right, we just have a two step highlight for our red. So I'll take a little bit of our Chimera Red and mix it with our base tone here. Let's see if it's on camera. Let's move some stuff real quick. There we go. Now you can see it. This is our Cinnamon Red and then our Chimera Red mixed into uh, mid-tone. And I'll come in here and highlight, leaving our base color in the shadows. using the cinnamon red really just to kind of thin down the consistency of the chimera red and the chimera red for that punch and then we'll mix a little of the chimera red with our sun yellow for our highlight I'm gonna go in here and work on this area as well but just punch the intensity even more and then edge highlight with it as well. So I'm just kind of tracing the shapes that are in here with that. Well, now we're going to go in and add text and our purity seals. So taking a little bit of that earth brown and some of that black, mixing it down, making sure it's fairly thin and comes off the tip of the brush real easy. And then just kind of Draw some little lines, wiggle the brush a little bit so it looks like text. And then flip this guy over so I can get to this side. The 
insinuation of text. All right, after you get done with your text, we're going to add little white dots to some of the red areas that we highlighted previously. So for the eyes, we progressively uh, highlight toward the front of the eye, and then just a little white dot in the back, and then on the uh, wrist, these little uh, command buttons. The same way, we do um, red toward the bottom, and then the little white dot at the top. Now we're going to start on the free hand for our fire. So we're going to put this on the bottom of his loincloth. For that, we're using the pale yellow again from game color. And that'll be our starting point for the flames. I'm just going to start in the center, kind of draw a wavy shape, and just trail it off to the bottom. And then we'll get a little hook here. It trails off and then come this way. And down. And just continue kind of drawing those little shapes like that. It doesn't have to be opaque. We're just going to draw out the shape and then fill it in. Alright, once you get your fire drawn in, we're going to take some of this sun yellow that we have sitting over here from our... orange mix that we did for all the red and just do an overcoat it's very thin yellow so it's kind of hard to get outside the lines with it you can see my brush is kind of going outside the lines but it's not really affecting the black all that much maybe you couldn't see that but now you can see it and then you can wipe away excess pooling Then as that dries, we're going to add progressive steps. We're going to take that red from Chimera, just get a ridiculously tiny amount to get an orange. And then come back. This is still a little bit wet, but I can get these upper flames. Get that orange in there. And then I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer before continuing. I got a lot of wet paint. So it's like an edge highlight that kind of fills in these upper, <coughs> upper. Uh, licks of flame and then you keep the the center in your uh, yellow color all right we got our flame in so now we're gonna add a decal to the shoulder pad so I'm using my turbo dork dry palette perfect thing to put water in for a reservoir um, I want to take the decal fix and put that down on the shoulder pad before I add the decal let that dry it's going to take an older series 7 it's got kind of a blown out tip on it and then i'm just going to prep the surface with the fix just to give a good attachment point for the decal and i can just see it on there by the glare and then we'll see if this decal is moving around yet. So yeah, I took my brush, just touch it, and you can see it kind of moving around down there. And then I'm just going to pick it up on my brush. I had to find a right shoulder pad forward facing salamander decal, which is fun. They're all left facing. I'm just going to drop it on there. You drop it on there with excess water and then you take the water and just pull it out with the brush. I'm going to slide this one down as far as I can on the shoulder pad. 
because it's gonna it's gonna poke out at the top that's just the the problem with putting flat decals on round surfaces but we're gonna add some decal softener here to it once this water evaporates a little bit and that'll help round it out soften it up let's notice this is a little close to that edge there we go that's a good spot so we'll let that dry and then we're just going to freehand over this um, and add some shading and detailing to it once it's uh, fixed but I'll come back once I get the um, the decal medium on there uh, to soften it and pull it down to the rest of the shoulder pad all right our water is evaporated so I'm going to take my decal medium now I'm not going to put it on the silicon because I am not sure this stuff is slightly aggressive so I just put it on my painting mat and then I'm gonna coat this really well with this stuff I'm not gonna try and force the decal to do anything yet got to make sure that it's softened pliable so adding back that moisture will make it slide around I'll wait just a second You can smell the stuff. You, know, you got the right thing if you're putting this on there. And then I'm going to press real gently with the paper towel. I'm not trying to slide the paper towel, I'm just pressing. And then I got the decal on my paper towel. Fun. And now I got to peel it off of this. Killed myself using a. Uh, Old decal, decal's like 20 years old. I got a little split in the middle of it from pressing on it. But we got them stuck. And I'm going to paint over it because I like to have the hand-painted look. Um, so we're going to shade these markings and it's going to clean up this crack for us as well. So I'm going to lay down a base white over the decal. Then we're going to shade up this lizard to look better than a decal. Alright, so I went in with a grayscale, added some scales to the uh, decal. Um, just using our cold, cold gray as a base color and then working up. Uh, to our white so adding just a little bit of white to our gray um, adding some detail and some kind of volumetric shape to it just putting some dots in the head and um, then going back and taking our yellow like we did with the fire on the front and doing a little bit of an underglow I just kept it more in the orange range instead of going all the way to red um, just to make it look like the lizards kind of lit from below um, Went in, added some brush strokes to the cloak. So that is our black blue that we're using for edge highlights on a lot of the other areas. Um, it didn't take it up super high. Um, I think I'm going to go with the flame motif on uh, the back of the cloak. I might treat it more as like a, a trim. Um, again, still thinking about that. All right, we got the flames on the back in the same manner that we did the flames on the front here. Um, same recipe and everything just drawn out one easy way to do is just to draw little kind of squiggly lines all the way To the bottom of the shape and then you can start connecting them making them wider Adding loops or adding forks at the top of the flames um, now Trying to figure out what's left on him um, We're gonna go start working on the base so Got his base here. It's a simple cork base um, few of these little um, half 
circle craft bead things you get at Michael's. Uh, and we we're just going to add down or spray down a white uh, base on this using our Bombay India ink. Got some of our yellow ink in our airbrush now. Make sure you do a lot of coats of white on this. You want really, really white. Um, you, you can, I don't know, kind of trick yourself putting it over black. And it'll look a lot whiter than it actually is. And then your yellow will gray out. I'm going to turn my pressure down here. And we're going over all of the white areas. Make sure you turn your base. Getting all the nooks and crannies. Those are real subtle motions with the airbrush with the trigger. Tiny hits of color. Get a nice solid coat. Rich color. Alright, I'm not even going to clean out the airbrush after that. I'm just going to spray out the rest of that yellow. I'm going to grab my red ink. few drops of it in the brush and then just spray the outside of the base. Let the red work into the, the center on its own. See how it's hitting the, the bubbles first. shading itself. Had something fly over and hit this little bubble. I'm going to get that off real quick. Alright, got it off there. Continue. Again, just hitting the outside ring. And you see how it's, it's kind of flowing through the cracks and hitting those areas on its own. Just shading it up. And I want to go till my, my red is really just rich and concentrated all the way around the outside. And there we got a nice kind of glowy lava. All right, we're gonna start painting our rock. So we're taking our black, our blue, and our white, just like we use with the edge highlights, creating a nice blue-gray for our beginning rock, complementing the red. And we're just gonna get our base layer in here, being careful to avoid anything it's already painted. Now go around the edges, let it kind of wet slash dry brush on there. We're not going for like a perfect line all the way down. The rocks are getting hot. And we can show that by painting them so. I will finish this base coat and then get back with you guys. Alright, once you get that base coat on, we're just going to add progressive mixes of white. The front of the base is this way, so I'm going to keep that brighter than the rest of the base. So I'll have bigger areas of white or light blue gray toward the front here. And it's it's kind of wet blending because I've been working fast on this base. I can see it kind of blending with some of the colors which means I'm just going to add more white as I go. Be sketchy with it. Reload, come over to this 
guy. That outside edge. It's okay if you hit your uh, your lava area too. It just looks like more rocks floating in there. Try not to, but don't drop everything you're doing and start working on trying to overcorrect. He has that little piece on his foot. To, we're just going to paint that in the same manner that we painted the stone. So I'll come in here and just get a base coat on of our blue gray. Just doing the Captain Morgan because he's a captain. So, same method for for that little piece. I just wanted to blend in with the base. I hit it with like some highlights and stuff here and there. But keeping it up and another another layer of white here it's okay it's red showing through here too it's just showing that the lava is starting to come through the rocks Then we'll go to straight white, load the brush with it. Take some off. And let it blend with that gray. There we go. Getting that nice, like, floaty debris field salamanders like to fight probably sleep with the heat on and then this guy should be ready for another layer so we'll come back back in here a little bit same technique really just be kind of rough with it rough and haphazard right there and then we'll attach this to the base and do a little touch up he does have a pin coming out of the bottom of his foot so there we go about right here kind of where I modeled it to be Gonna hang off and we're gonna, gonna put an impression. Might go a little bit forward. There we go. Push. That way I can see where my little dent is. Right there in the uh don't want to set him anything wet. Um right there in the uh, whatever this cork. Um uh, and I'm gonna drill that out so we glue him so he's pinned to the base. Alright, and all that is left to do is add our black ring on the base. So, we're going to need a couple of coats. This black's a little bit thinner. Actually, I'm going to get out my Chimera black. Thick black. But I went in and kind of not kind of, but actually just touched up the uh, little barrel that he's standing on, the Captain Morgan barrel. Whatever piece of debris that is. Now I'm just coming in from the bottom, angling my brush so that I don't hit the base. So that gives me that clean line. I hope you guys enjoyed watching.
And please do let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Always happy to answer those. Get a black ring on here. Get him finished. I like black rings on bases. They, uh, I mean, I think the ring should be finished no matter what you're painting with whatever color you want. It used to be we used to do the green rings way back in the day. Make them look like green grass. They can tell what, what models were painted in the 90s. Alright, that'll finish this guy up. I hope you guys again had a good time watching. And as always, happy painting.